Ah, uh, we begin. Yes, we do. Salidad, salutations. <coughs> buenos dias, buenos tardes, buenos noches, all that good stuff. Inaini, inakwana, everything that's awesome. All right. Today's, well, first of Kevlar Kess, Dr. Love. We are back to driving again. We are back to cruising again. Just cruising. Just cruising. Today's episode is an episode about individualism versus collectivism. Mm -hmm. I picked it. Yes, you did. I don't know why I picked it. I just picked it. I'm okay. joking. I was going to ask you why you picked it. No, I, well, I picked, I picked it because it's the core, it's the premise, it's the foundation for most arguments in the world today, for most people today. So when, mm. when, you, yeah, when, you, when you go online, it's always men versus women. It's always red pill, blue pill. It's always these guys, that guys. It's always blue versus yellow, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. That sounds like collectivism versus collectivism. You think women. so? But here's mm. what's interesting: when it when it comes to men versus women, what's happening is the men who are online who are complaining about women, what they're complaining about is they're complaining about individualistic women, and they don't even know it. Mm. That's why you hear things like, "Oh, it's not all blah blah," but. Oh, so you're saying they're generalizing their experience. They're generalizing their experience because they can't define their experience. That's that. It's an interesting one. And it's, it's crazy because I, I sit back and I watch and I go, okay, mm. you're saying this, but what you actually mean is this. But you, you because you can't explain it, you, you can't define it, you're not sure what it is. You, you fall into that cycle. Do you right? think that could be because also taking responsibility for your experience and saying this is what I have had happen to me and this is what I've experienced and what I've attracted is harder than just kind of say well all women are this or all men are this do you think the part of that generalization is, is not sort of like yes and no Human, humanity as itself are very very focused on negative bias we enjoy right. negativity because mm. it gives us something to watch and see and stay back and go, oh, look, something negative. We don't go back and go, oh, positive. We like negativity. And what happens is a person who has had a bad experience or two or three bad experiences will chalk it up into the whole of that gender. Mm -hmm. Right. And even someone who hasn't had any, any experiences would, um, would borrow off someone else and go, oh, my mate went through this, therefore blah 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 mm -hmm. my friend is there for blah 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 so they would chalk it up into again conversation ne negative bias they just put it all together because the more negative things you have to talk about the more interesting you may seem to be because people give you attention mm -hmm. and today's today's humans are addicted to attention that's mm -hmm. their that's their cocaine the chocolate that's their high Mm -hmm. They get the, they get the buzz on the attention on the likes on the da da da, yeah. I posted I posted a a video like a little video skit video about a month ago or so mm -hmm. about the hungry caterpillars an old school kids kids program kids um book, but okay. but it was about the the hungry genetically modified caterpillar. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's funny. It was a joke thing, mm -hmm. but to date, that's a, the video I've posted that has the highest amount of likes I've ever had. Ever had. Like, if I turn left and I turn right, I get a hundred more likes in less than less than an hour. I don't even know. I think a week ago was was almost two hundred thousand likes really? for, that, for that one video. I don't give a rat's ass. It actually vexes me. I, 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 I go, oh, really? Because I want to see something else that um, I had a convo about. We had a convo about, and someone replied this. I want to reply someone's reply, mm -hmm. but I can't see that because I'm seeing a hundred more likes, two hundred more likes on the same video. I don't care. It it does me nothing. In the real in the real world, I do things. 
that actually matter. So the addiction of being liked, I couldn't care more or less. But I also understand why a lot of people are addicted to being liked or having more likes in their videos. I get it. I get it. Because mm. those who know how to, they monetize it. Right. Mm. Sorry. Let's go back to that stuff about about so being individualistic. Mm. Is, it's quite a big subject. I'm curious to see how you. It's massive. This. It's massive. Mm. The smart thing is not to is not to look at the entire building, but look at the foundation. Okay. That's what we're doing. We're not, we're not looking at this, that, that, that. Because once I break it down for you to the smallest T, you can actually put it into every conversation. Because every time people are talking about anything internet or whatever based, it's actually it's actually individualism versus collectivism. Always has been. Always will be. So, when women complain about men doing this, 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 mm -hmm. they are not complaining about men being part of the community. They're complaining about the men who are selfish, the men who are self-centered, the men who are individualistic. Okay. Because the, the men that most women tend to like are the men who actually are part of a community, part of a society, part of who basically, the term high value man, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to use that. High value man, high earning man, high value man is a man who has value in his community. Okay. A man who has value, who gives value to his collective. That's high value, right? Not high earning. It's not the same thing. Because you, you could be a high earner, but if men don't respect you, 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 well, you are another. Right? So, mm -hmm. women tend to like the man who is got the collectivism mindset. Men tend to complain about the women who are individualistic self-centered selfish don't care about what you 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 are going through they don't care about what they what they're going through what they have to gain because that's the main issue it's not actually what you are getting or not getting from them it's basically do you see me do you see we are we part of a team is there a teamwork happening over here is this a me dynamic is this a we dynamic oh thank you when I hire people, when I hire coaches, when I hire staff, what I always say is, this is not a me company, this is a we company. When, when we're working, we work we based, not me based. It's not about me, it's about us. That's how I do when I hire people. When I, everyone I work with, we, that's our focus. It's about we, it's about how can we get together and be our very best mm -hmm. so that's collectivism is we need to grow together again one of my slogans is learn teach inspire grow which is you learn a skill you teach others collectivism mm -hmm. when you teach others in learning you teach in teaching you're learning as well absolutely you see my point so when you teach others you inspire them in them being inspired, they grow because you need inspiration to grow. In their growth, you're growing as well. So it's learn, teach, inspire, grow. That will never change. In this century, the next century, it will never change. That's what it is. It's collectivism. But the ones who are in the religious is like, oh no, it's all about me, me, me. What can I get from this? What can I get from this? We don't need you because when you have the person who is individualistic in that collective they if you leave them in that group they would slowly destroy that group well yeah because they're going to influence other people boom so you have to find your way to get them out of that group because i have this belief whereas um mm. every, everyone everyone plays a part in your in your circle it's like a chessboard. Kings, queens, pawns, knights, rooks, every bishops. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a part to play, right? 
as long as you are part of the team as long as you know you are part of the team if you are not you're the individual which is fine go solo go and do your thing you know, you're somewhere else. Hmm. But if we if we leave the individual in the collective they destroy the collective because they only see everything they do as a personal gain for themselves don't not caring that their actions might destroy the collective so that's the we oh, that, this, that is, this is really interesting mm, very this is really interesting very cuz cuz i see what you're saying and i've seen those people that have that really like toxic disruptive effect absolutely on group kind of cohesion and, and you can put it in any context. topic any context any mm -hmm. aspect in this life okay. and you see it but let me play devil's advocate Go on. some would say what you're advocating is a kind of communist thing almost where it's like we're all part of this thing and we're all the same we all have to follow this thing like where does individual um, freedom fit into Disney's High School Musical. We're all in this together. <laughs> so I was like, how did you know that song? Shut up, fool. I know it. We'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Communism. Why would you say that? Well, just like, it sounds almost like that kind of a thought or ideology where it's like, we, we're all in this together. We all function a certain way anyone that doesn't go along with the mix isn't isn't welcome that's not true i'm playing devil's advocate that's extreme everyone is welcome as long as you're part of the team that's it you don't want to have someone in your team who hasn't got your best interest who is there just to get from you and not contribute because that which you have built for so long will be destroyed whether you call it communism blue tick red tick i couldn't care what it's called it's called togetherism. We're there together. If someone's going to destroy what I've built, leave. You see my point? If someone, if if you, if it takes you a decade to build something, and you bring some person because she's got a nice tight skirt, and she wants to ruin exactly ruin the whole thing from the inside, you're gonna just stand there and go, oh, your skirt, your, your skirt is nice. I was working somewhere on the weekend, and I was managing this team. Two of the people showed up. Two of the people showed up almost an hour late. Mm. And <laughs> did that deep sigh. And I was just thinking, what? And then when I chatted to them, one of them was telling one story and the other one they hadn't they hadn't corroborated their story properly. So one started giving one excuse, another one started I guess you don't even get your story straight before you got here, did you? And they're like laughing and it was just awkward and I don't know, man. It, it was, you know, it's not my business, so I ended up. Do you see my point? Working though? with them, but it's the thing is that's disruptive, and it's like things, things like that, things like people not pulling their weight. I find it very, very challenging because let's say you're working with someone that's lazy. Now other people have to work harder to, to cover for the work they're not doing. And that creates resentment. Do you know what I mean? And, and, it, and it's very, yeah, it's damaging to that whole dynamic when you have a team. Mm -hmm. So I understand what you're saying from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, we, we just we just said the same thing. We've said the same damn thing. So you're managing people, and you you have to make sure the collective is fine. Mm. But then one or two individuals come in who don't even have a grasp of what the team are going through whatever they don't care they don't they couldn't care more or less they laugh at it because like you know what it's not me ha 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 so that's on a small scale imagine on a bigger scale imagine lives were at risk imagine jobs were at risk imagine sales were at risk based on that person's actions or inactions the thing is I, I think nowadays I mean when you said individual individualism versus collectivism you mentioned it as, as a topic for today the first thought I, I thought of was the west versus 
I think I texted everybody the else. West <laughs> the West versus the rest. I think I texted yeah, 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 yeah. Because because that was what I thought of. Like, it seems like it's very, it's very much a Western idea, ideology of kind of like the individual. Well, um, whereas when you get to other countries, you you really see that sense of community and family and we so much more. I remember when I went to Peru and you'd see the family and there'd be like the granddad, then there'd be like the, the mother and the father mm. and like the siblings and then the grandchild as well. And the grandchild would be sitting on the grandparents, you know, lap having dinner and they'd look after their old people. They wouldn't put them in homes. They would, they would, you know, they'd, they'd look after their, their grandparents and stuff. They'd live with the family. Yes. And you could really see that it was about that. You know, they had their jobs and they did their other things, but the priority is is the family is looking after everyone family and, and first. It is, fa- yeah it was proper fast and family. furious <laughs> fa- the family, family family it was all about the family and it was interesting to see because i'm, I'm you know growing up here in london i'm used to people who will, will see their grandparents at christmas when they you know want to get their presents from them or you know maybe a couple times a year or whatever yes. put them in a home Get about them, get them out of the way. You know what I mean, so you can live your life. So you know what very, I say, though? very different way of thinking. I say, if I don't see you throughout the year, I don't see you at Christmas. Wow. Fight me. Wow. As in, I don't want to see you if I don't see you throughout the year. Is that what you're saying? If I don't see you throughout the year, <laughs> I'm not gonna see you on Christmas. <laughs> Do you know what? What? That's that makes sense, man. I, you know, I can't, I can't even argue. Because I've, because what are we doing otherwise, right? Like I get it, I totally, I don't totally get it. Like we. Well, that's my vibe. I'm sitting there like, what are we doing? What's this? I get I'm it. I'm an adult. I get it. Stop it. What? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm a grown ass man. I'm an adult. It is silly though, man. Like, yeah, you know what? I haven't spoken to you for twelve months, but um, for that one day. I just thought of you, man. Let's this, come by yard together. I was watching this cheesy Christmas movie and you just popped into my head. Jingle all the way. <laughs> it's not a tumor. <laughs> Billy! Brian! <laughs> Put the toy down! Now! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to on you a little bit. Oh, man. Mm. Nah, it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. And then we need to be... To have the collective mindset is fine, it's good, because it's healthy. To have the individual mindset, it's fine, it's good, because it's healthy for you, fine. If, my thing again for most things in life is, if you, like whatever you do, do you boo, do you to the finest boo, mm. as long as you are not hurting other people, we're fine. The moment that's gonna hurt somebody else, ah, Charlie, it's personal. The moment it's gonna hurt somebody else, it's personal. That's mm. it. Like, okay, good. Gloves are off. Let's do this. That's the that's the mindset situation. Now, as it turns out, there's there's a like um individualistic slash collectivistic scale for countries. Dude, it's a, it's a whole new world, you know. You don't know about this. Twenty first century. As it turns out, the highest <laughs> the highest individualistic countries are the UK. Yeah. And the US. There you oh, go. Duh. There you go. It's like, oh, in other news, water's wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised you know? at all. I figured you'd say UK number one. Well, well, yeah, I was like, duh. Wow. You know, and wow. then, like you said, like, Peru, everything, all this, like, like Japan. Yeah, Japan is something else from what I've been told. Yeah. One of my friends, just, one of my friends, he, he lives there. It's crazy, there. Japan. Not- he was telling me when you're walking home, people walk in a, in a line, like, Oh. Like soldiers, oh. and then you just see someone turn off for the line. <laughs> so, I was like, "What?" Like, there's a very collective. So here's kind of he, here's what's there. interesting, right? How do you think people get trained to be individualistic? Oh, this, this is world? a good question. Might even be too good for me. I because it's almost like asking fish what water is, right? Because they're just in it. Like, they're like, what do you mean? What's water? Because they're in it. So Because fish don't know it's water because yeah, they're in exactly, it. Exactly, right? So uh, that's a really... Hmm. I'd have to actually give that some thought. I would have to give that some thought. How do you 
train people to be individualistic versus collective. Everything around you. I think yes. Yeah, so the the greatest um, <sighs> the greatest commodity of export in the UK and the US is media. Mm, Advertising, films. promotions, films, movies. Yes. Movies, series, everything. The stories you're raised on. So all of these yes, things, yeah. storytelling. When you mm. tell when you tell stories, and the main characters are. Um, it's the hero, isn't it? One thing. One man, now, one woman. From my perspective, I call it bad writing. Because hey. the, the idea is to is to okay, I need to impress. I've got a story. I need to impress the investors. I have to write the story according to the investors to make sure that the story blends into whatever they give me. So if say Pizza Hut promotes my movie, I have to write whereas my characters are always going to eat pizza in Pizza Hut. Okay. Which now basically shifts my character's directive of who they are because I have my own thing. That's just a, an, an example, right? Hmm. So when a movie goes on TV, on in cinema, it's because you have one, two, three, four, five, ten companies that have promoted that movie. So the story they had in, 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 in initially <laughs> has changed mm. to what you see out there today. So the character who was once something has now changed. Yeah. You understand? Go on. So, okay, example. Blade. The movie Blade in the 90s, it was a very low budget movie. No one cared. There was no sponsor. There was a, you didn't see Blade drinking Pepsi. Mm. None of that. Mm. There were no sponsors. It was just mm. that. And because of that, it stayed true to its story. Okay. Makes sense. It went straight to its story. Nothing changed. Awesome movie. Now, the new Blade movie coming out, supposed to come out, is not the same. It's not the same. You talking about the, the new new like the new one. one. Blade three. Ugh. Another day. We'll talk about another day. The, the new new one coming <laughs> out. Never talk about that. <laughs> Come, coming out is right. They had changed the entire story to make to to make the new Blade female, oh, and to have a He Man slash Scott Spil Scott Pilgrim esque situation, which is what a story a movie. A series that's made about you is is you basically have you the main character the name of the movie is your name but the, the you are gonna be in the film for like five minutes and then you're gonna get quote-unquote killed off not killed off but you're in a coma but then when you're in a coma this girl who is your love interest slash friend slash whatever female in your life is gonna spend the entire movie going on a journey trying to find out who put you in a coma it's a bit like the way they did black panther essentially where they kind of they made the woman uh... no well not exactly the scott same, pilgrim before the movie started right? on netflix he man on netflix i'm saying this because it's exactly the same story oh okay it's not it's exactly the same story same formula yeah the same story your movie is called blah 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 Right? That's interesting. It's the exact not they didn't mix it. The exact That's same story. Interesting. Your main character dies in the first episode. That's kind of significant too, actually, right? And then the because entire series, you. the entire series is about wow. the person who is not Scott Pilgrim. But it's still called Scott Pilgrim. Fighting and beating everybody else up, everything, and being the main character. And the last five minutes, they got Boom! There you go. He's not dead anymore. It's got Pilgrim. He man. Okay. Blade. So connect this to the individualism versus collectivism. When you see a movie on cinema, it's not about the world around you. It's not about the end of end of the world. It's not about the apocalypse, World War Three. It's not. It's about how this one person has got to go and get their nails done before Tuesday. That's what it is. It's not about the chaos of everyone that's dying around you. No, no, no. It's about me. About me, how I feel. It's about every Arnie movie out there. 
Arnold will take a gun and shoot every single race out there. Black, white, Indian, Pakistani, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But when his friend Billy gets shot in the leg, Billy! No! Ha! He gets shot in the leg. His life is more important than everyone's life. Yeah. Individualistic. You are more important than everybody else. Mm. No one else matters but you. No one else is important but you. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, yeah. what is directly connected to you, that's Hollywood for you. Hollywood tells you it's all about Every you. Hollywood movie tells you it's all about, it's you. All about you. It definitely does. Every. And when you make a movie that's about us, it's like, nah, man, we don't need that here. I was just trying to think of a movie that is about us, actually, as you were saying. Though. Take your time. The, hmm. See, I thought of... Even the movie called Us isn't about us. <laughs> See your life. <laughs> Even the film, Us, is not about us. Uh -huh. See your life. See your life. <laughs> See, I'll catch you. I now watch Us again. What, what's Us about? About the family, right? It wasn't. It was about her. One person. Yeah, I said it. Fight me. It's the truth. I thought of, what did I think of? I thought of Apocalypto and Master Mohicans because it was supposed to be about like a group of people. But it still kind of broke down to the individual story, isn't it? Thank you. I guess. Thank you. Apocalypto was about the individual. It was about him trying to get his wife mm. before she gave birth. That was it. That's what I'm saying. It's supposed to be about, you know. The community. Oh. But it was it did break down to this individual. Oh. Yeah. That's that. I mean I've I've grown up watching movies from every corner of the planet. Mm. And I can see the differences. Definitely. If you watch like a Bollywood film, for example, it's, it's very much uh, about the family. You realize though the reason so a Hollywood a Western based movie is and about certain ideals and is written about the individuals for, for for so long that it's so hard for writers to write about a group. So when watch a movie about a group, Magnificent Seven, um God is a Galaxy, Avengers, mm. Justice League, right? They, it's hard to write about more than one person. X-Men. Mm -hmm. Like I keep saying, Wolverine and Friends. <laughs> Avengers, Iron Man and Friends. It's about one main person and everyone's the side character. It's hard to write about everybody else. Because they don't know how to. Mm. Because not just me and you, the writers themselves are accustomed their own lifestyle, they are used to being individualistic. As you, as a person that's individualistic, you cannot write a collective mindset. A collective mind can. How? Because you see every single person's pros and cons. Weakness and strengths, and you know how to make them. Do it as an individual. The soup mix. Are you saying that you'd have had to have existed as part of a collective to be able to write from that perspective? Is yes. that what you're saying? Exactly. What I'm saying. You'd have to have existed as part of a collective to write from that perspective. Yes. The collective it finds it easier to write about the individual because you ha you are you are handling a team of ten people. You can handle one person easier. <laughs> a person who has never managed 10 people can't handle 4 people. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's what it is. Water flows down for a reason. It's what it is. One of the things that came to mind on this subject mm. is if you look at the people who are the happiest, the healthiest, and who live the longest yes they are people who are connected to the collective yes 
and so if you examine the, those communities, they, whether it's their family has got strong uh, ties and they spend a lot of time together regularly, or it's within their community or it's uh, within a religious group, oftentimes it's a mixture of these things. They've got spiritual life, which again is a, is a collective thing Yes. Uh, in that sense where they, they gather with others who have the same faith. Mm. Um, whereas people who are individuals, like if you go back to lockdown, for example, we saw people's mental health really plummet. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that sense of um, community and, and connection with other people. Yes. Um, you see people having issues with depression. Um, yeah, there's so many different outcomes. Like one of the things I, I heard was that when you put people in an old people's home, it reduces their life expectancy by I think it's something like 50, 50 60 percent. I don't want to give the exact number, it's a lot number, but it reduces their life expectancy massively. So just in terms of how we function, we're not actually designed to exist outside of that community. Like we're not we're not happy, we're not healthy, we're not, we're not functional. No one is an island. Mm. We don't function well when we're by ourselves. Not too not too much. No. We all we all need our our time. We, you need you need you time. I need me time. It's mm. fine. Mm. Because that me time, you time is our time to re rejuvenate. Especially especially for those who who are in the position of leadership mm. because people mm -hmm. are consistently uh, constantly awesome. taken from you Shit. not it's not material stuff just energy i need your energy here energy energy here energy energy here energy energy here what do you do you crash you crash when you don't know about your time so it's not it's not a knock on anything. It's just a lot of times people need due time. I, funny enough, I used to think that it was just guys that needed me time. No, brother, women too need their me time. When do you get your me time? Because you're a very busy person. Well, well, <laughs> that's what you said it was such. So emphatically. Oof. <laughs> Well, well, Dr. Love, my me time was meant to be in Thailand. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. That's why you said it like that, okay. Yes. My me time can wait. It's like that. Again, that's collectivism. Others, others need me. When I know that others need me a lot less, I can have me time. And that's what it is. That's why there's, there's no me time right now. When is your me time? Mm, uh, I try to carve some out on a particular, a particular day of the week where I try and <laughs> not the time. Not take calls and just have the day to myself. But yesterday I kind of sacrificed that, and I was resenting it too. I was on this, I was on this call, and I remember just feeling not, not happy about it. But it was important, so I did it. And then today the same person called me again, and I was like, "Listen, moving forward, <laughs> this is what we're gonna do." Um, but I try, yeah, I try and carve out a little time for myself once a week, mm. and then outside of that. It's, um, I'm quite lucky because there is time, like earlier in the day, usually, right? You know, I go for a walk or do something. Um, so yeah, I, I do, I do get that time, and I, I need it. Like I need probably more than most people I find. So I, I try and carve that out. But then get, I start getting a little bit edgy, edgy, yes, jittery, irritable. Irritable, a bit short, a bit short, a bit abrupt, a bit impatient, a bit snappy. Yeah, a little, <laughs> a little bit snappy. Cut. <laughs> English is oh, English. Oh man, my English is English, man. Just like this winter's been wintering. Oh, hey, geez. winter's different, brother. It really is. So this basically, year. it's cold right now. I'm not gonna even give the number. It's like it's no point. It's no point. He's like I haven't yeah. looked actually. Today, I don't want to look. It was minus one the other day, and I was like, because wow, you okay. can go. Oh, it's three degrees, but your bones say it's, it's minus five. It's like, why are you playing hard to get? Which one is which? 
So I'm like, I'm not just forget numbers. Just forget numbers. Just embrace the funk. That's what it is. Embrace the funk. Okay, so you said you were supposed to get me time in Thailand. How about outside of that? Just like generally on a week to week, do you like? Do you take time for self, or do you just kind of just? Wow, that's a sweet question, yo. I do not. Sweet. A sweet question. I do not recall self time. I cannot remember self time. I tell everyone to. They need self time mm. because they need it. I can handle lack of self time. Not everyone can. And that's the difference. Why? Because I've I have trained myself to be able to handle lack of self time. It's just like saying, look at that. It's like saying to people, like, okay, I get four hours of sleep. It's not a brag. I'm not trying to go, yeah. I think you four hours. It's not. Trained yourself it's not to a brag. Do. It's just something that. It took me a while. I wanted to do. I wanted to see how my body functions under less sleep. So it took me a while to get there. You see my point? And mm-hmm. It's no. It's no pride thing. It's not a yeah. No. It's it's discipline. It's focus. It's knowing you can do it. It's you need to as well, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And then I got okay, good. Six hours sleep. No, four hours sleep. It's that. It's that ability to do it. So because I do it, it does not mean everyone has got to do it. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. How could you tell a person is, in, is individualistic? Well, pause actually. Hold on. Mm. Another word for those who are called individualistic are sociopaths. <laughs> I mean, wow. That's kind of a, that's kind of a, an extreme form of It's not a lie though, is it? <laughs> I want to hear the Russian helper on this one, good. That's it. Self-centered. The, the, no, no care about the, the feelings or okay. what everyone else is going through. Individualistic. It's an extreme form of being individualistic, I suppose. Actually, it's not. It's, it, it's the perfect description. Perfect. So shipper. I'm in it for me. I don't care about we. That's what I was, I was trying to say to you. Is like, how could you tell? How could you? How how would you know if a person is individualistic? Because if you think about it, that's the quote-unquote PC word. That's the nice way of saying sociopath. Individualistic. Exactly. I understand what you're saying. I don't know if I agree with that. Though. Kind of, they don't have to agree with me. I don't care. Extreme. If you like, I, <laughs> I know agree, you don't agree. care. What I still wet. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Are you feeling guilty? Yeah? Water is still wet. Have you been called sociopaths? <laughs> eh? Me? Barking dog? Not is that this, what it not is? Not this week. Not this week. No. Ah! <laughs> guilty as charge. No, I can we honestly, have catch you. I can honestly say I've never been called a sociopath. For real? No. What have you been called? <laughs> <laughs> narcissist no. Narcissist? <laughs> no, but... Have I been called a narcissist? Maybe. I'm trying to remember. Interestingly, Possibly. one who is a well, narcissist... throw that word around so much Yes, now, it's exactly. It's kind of lost its meaning, man. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's not It's not what they say, it's who's saying it. Yeah. Totally you know, it's some... Yeah. Exactly. Some no face person saying you're narcissist. I'm not. I'm a fine boy. It's different. Okay. <laughs> hey. You like mirrors. Mirrors like me. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine. Hey, fine boy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Please. So, narcissist is what, duh. What do you think I look at mirrors for? Focus. Come on. Keep your head in the game. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't come down for anything. I have a comeback. Whatever it is, I like. Yeah, shoot right back. Mm. Yeah, I, was say, I was saying in my post today, funny enough, like, it's, it's cool to be in that space where you really don't care what people think of you. I've had a few people try and say some shit to me recently where it's like, you could tell they, they thought, ha, I've insulted you now, and you're kind of looking at me like, ha, ha, pow, gauntlet uh, raised. Like, come on, man. Wait, see how I see it, though, is, again, it's not what people say, it's who says it. That too. It's just like, you don't count, bro. You don't count. You're like... I don't value your opinion enough at all. to give a shit. To, to give a... I just don't. 
when you don't count, you don't count. And that's it. It's like, eh. Okay. I think, oh, there was, so, let me just, short story. Mm -hmm. um, had, had, I have a thing with names. I have a thing with names. I have a thing with, with names and the way names are pronounced. It's very yeah. important. Okay. Because it, it bothers you if they're not pronounced yes, correctly. Because your name, there's a power to your name. Mm. The power to your name, there's an understanding to your name. Your name has a meaning. Especially if it's a traditional name. Mm -hmm. People don't give out traditional names if, like, a, like an English name. Makes sense. It means something. So when someone is pronouncing mm -hmm. it wrong, you gotta go, nah, this is pronounced. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I've always been that person. I've always been that person. So there was a, a video where it's, it's like this white guys are with, trying Nigerian food. It's, it's, a, it's a thing now. It's Is it the one I sent you with the with the white guy who's um... no 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 that that that's, this is this is this is months ago. Okay. It is months ago. It's, and it's a thing where it's, they go oh try blah blah for the first time. Met these two guys trying Nigerian for the first time. Okay. And they were like they they were just they were battering the names. Ah. Oh, the name of the food. Of the food. Ah. Oh, Igsi. Ah. Oh, Okoro. I'm like ah. Oh, they just. Eba, no, no, weave, weave, dodge the punches, can't do that. Just wrecking the whole name the whole time. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, oh, there. And, and they're trying to speak the language as well. And everyone was like, oh, no. And people were really happy that, oh, look, white folks eating Nigerian food, white folks trying to speak Yoruba. And I'm like, interesting. This is a trend now, huh? Okay. It's an African thing, don't bother. It's, it's white Jesus thing. It's a white Jesus thing. The exceptional white man thing, yeah. White Jesus, yeah. <coughs> so I go, hold up. We are speaking English as we speak every damn day. So we can speak three, four languages in a heartbeat. Why would you be impressed for a white person to be speaking your language, even the worst way as well? Mm -hmm. See that? Why is that impressive? It's white folk worship. Why you eat spaghetti, pasta, Singapore fried rice, every other meal that's not your food every damn day? Why would it be impressive when someone who is not Nigerian is eating Nigerian food? How is that impressive? of the Oyibo worship that's it so I called out I was like no enough with this with this worship nonsense mm -hmm. How you, did you, call you, you are you are speaking the language I am literally writing in English language speaking English language and you are impressed that someone's speaking your language why someone's eating your food you eat everyone's food every day it's not impressive. You need you people need to stop with this white people worship. Was this online that you called this? Yeah, online, online, right there. Boom, boom. Mm. Right, I wrote the whole essay. Boom. And then, mm. then comes the the hate. Oh my gosh! What's wrong with people like you? Da, 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 da. There's always one. You got to ruin it. Blah, blah, you got to ruin it. I don't know why you're the, why people like in here. Spreading division. You know, and naturally. I always give the best replies to the ones who like my my, my, my content. So if, if I see positive vibes, I'm gonna reply, mm -hmm. respond, oh yeah, thank you. Da -da -da -da, thank you, awesome, you know? Because mm -hmm. my thing is positive vibes only. Done. Everyone that has negative mind, they're like, nah, they, I'm never gonna look at them. But we're, I'm having chats and convos, those who are positive minded. Nice. And then one lady just came out, oh. See, normally if you send me an essay, I read the first line, and the last line, in between, I don't care. I've never been bothered. It's like, I'm not going to bother. I was like, you know what? I have one minute. It came with, oh, I don't know why, why you were even here. Why are you doing this? People are always, people are always, all my life, people are always pronounce my name wrong. And it's okay. People are like this. And it's okay. Da, da, da. So, they pronounce our food wrong. And it's okay. And I... 
I say no, I kiss. Click on a page. Good. What's this nonsense? Went back. I said, you are you are projecting. You might need therapy. That's it. That's it. I was okay. listen. I had the same thought go across my mind today when I read this comment. This woman left for me. Um, completely different topic. But someone had put up a post. I made a comment on it, and then she was like, I said no. What you're saying? This guy made an analogy, and I was like, yeah, facts. The woman was like, it's not facts. Facts is your bald head makes you look like blah. <laughs> Microaggression. Um, yeah. And I went to her page and like what she said was not polite at all. I went to her page and, and looked at it and like she just looked really sad. Wow. And she had mad tattoos and she looked like she had like some unprocessed trauma. She looked messed <laughs> up, man. So it's funny what you said about therapy, because I looked at her and she looked like she looked genuinely sad. Like unhappy. And like you know that, that meme when you got like the Jedi and he's just like d got the dark side of the Jedi on one side and <laughs> whispering in his ear. Like the dark Jedi was just like, I know exactly what to say to this woman. <laughs> but you should have. And the other part of me was like, eh, no. she's a mess. And I'm, I'm and I was in two minds and in the end I didn't I didn't follow the dark side. But Here's why I do that. The <laughs> you, 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 you need to because genuinely, a lot of people know they need therapy. But they ain't gonna do Genuinely, a lot of people know they need therapy. They only go on into therapy when someone else says to them, you might need therapy. And this how do you know, pause, 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 pause. how do you know if someone needs therapy? When you say something progressive, something growth, something community-based, something collectively grown, and someone has a negative aspect about it, especially when you say something without negativity, and people see it from their own point of view. You can say water is wet. A person who has a negative mindset would come in and say to you, how dare you talk about water? What's wrong with being wet? Da -da 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 -da. They might need therapy. See that? You're not being offensive. You're being, okay. you're being neutral. Yeah, yeah, you're not insulting them. Not insulting. But that's what it is. Some people might need therapy, but they just need a second opinion of, you know what, you might need therapy. And sometimes it, it, it is like, oh wow, this person said that to me. I might really need to look at this because this person doesn't even know me and they've seen it. That crossed my mind too. That's what I was going to say. That did cross my mind too. Then say it. There's no harm in saying you might need. I'm not saying you do need therapy. I just say you're projecting. You might need therapy. That's what it's projecting. When I say, oh, the sky is blue. Oh, how dare you, the sky is blue. Yeah, something's off. Something's off. You're projecting. No, when, I, when I went to the page and looked at it, man, it was like, just the, you know, you look at someone's eyes and you can just see the sadness, man. Like the deep, deep. Sadness and like the soul, mate. mad trauma, like the soul, mate. tons, yeah, tons of like tattoos, and then like just emptiness. And I was like, it was like, like it was sad, fam. Like just sad looking at the pictures. I was like, oh man, like you're, you're a mess. Like, like, like you're genuinely not, you're genuinely not in a good place. Like that's, that's, you probably start crying if I insult you. That's a void you don't want to fill up. Like that. Nah, That's a void I'm not getting there, man. You, you know, know what I mean? Like, keep your hole there. I was like, hmm. Oh, and I think there's a lot of people like that online, man, who, who they'll lash out because it's like it's safe and they can they can. What's more interesting is the ones who comment like literally one second after you. <laughs> They've not even processed what you said. Triggered. Yeah, is is the urge to need to reply now. Yeah, I heard this a few times recently. There was this other kid who said some shit. I said something. He was like, oh, you're nobody. Big laughter emoji. And I went to his page and he was just overweight and just, you know what I mean? 21, built like he's 41. I was just uh, like, oh, mate. The state of this kid, like. You say cardio. <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, get back in the gym. Because he had like the gym photos, but they're from like a year ago. And then, then there's nothing posted, so I'm like, I know you ain't been in the gym, because it's been a good year. 
You're mean to make me to sin. You're mean. Yeah, You're mean. mean. <laughs> <laughs> Audio. It's cardio. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's almost like trolling, but Rich yeah. is trolling. It is trolling, brother. You, 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 the thing is, again, you, you, you've, been, you've, been, you've been trained to be a nice person. And then you realize growing up that it doesn't work. The sentence is kind of incomplete. Be nice to those who are nice to you. That's it. Be mean. Those are mean to you. That's why me. The moment someone tries anything with me, I just go cold. I'm like, ah, I know where to place you. Cold, heartless. Logical, like AI, no emotion. If someone comes at you, it comes at you sort of sideways. With, with, uh, sideways with nonsense. I give nonsense in twofold. If you go for a jab, I go jab cross, easy. If you go once, I go one to left hook. If you throw two at me, I throw three back at you. It's just it's my programming. Mm. As simple as that. So I am nice to those who are nice to me. Dude, I'm the, I, if, if I see you're a nice person, I will go across the world for you. No question. And if they're not nice? If you're not nice to me, I'll cut you off like yesterday. I'll just disown you. Easy. Easy. Let me cry my shit at any morning. I don't care. It's the greater good because I'm looking at a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan, a 30-year plan, a 100-year plan for the collective. So I'm trying to gather the, the nice ones together to be nice to the nice ones together so that we can actually all grow together in peace. So we can learn, teach, inspire, grow. Full circle. The ones who don't know how to be nice by, by default, they don't need you here. I've got, a, I've got a greater plan that supersedes me. That's the collectivism. I've got plans that are going to still be going way after I'm gone. And if you are a dickhead now, you're not going to be a dickhead. Legit. Wherever you are right now, you're going to be more of that tomorrow. You're going to be, if you're a dickhead now, I'm not going to make you less of a dickhead. It's not going to happen. You're going to be, you, you're going to be less of a dickhead when you recognize your dickheadedness and you change that for yourself. That's not a me problem. That's a you problem. So being nice is a no-no. And it vexes me because our mothers have taught us that. Mm. To, be, to try to be nice. But they didn't know. Because guess what? They only taught us what they knew. So you can't blame them yeah. for giving you the best they thought. For giving you the best they thought they could. They, they, they did their best. Their very, very best. Oh, I love you. But no. Be an asshole. Those who deserve it. Standard. Standard. Mm. Nice and Latin. What? Translate nice roots of it. Latin would be so stupid. Mm. Naive, mm. naive, silly. Mm. But I've, I realized though that I have not said this in a very long time. Mm. Because I've been around nice people for a very long time. I have removed all the not nice people around me. Mm -hmm. Because if you were not nice to me, I'll say to you, kiss my sexy black ass. Hey. Cause I haven't said it in a long time. Mm. Like, oh, you haven't said it for a long time, so that's how you know you're not in that yeah, space. Yeah, I mean, that's, I'm not in that space yet. I go, oh, nice. Someone's been, someone's been doing due, due, due diligence, which is good. It's good. Yeah. But when you... When you start to grasp that um, realism, reality of understanding the me and the we, mm -hmm. when you start to see the small things and grasp, okay, this is me, this is we, this is we, this is me, me and we and me and we, mm -hmm. you find it easier to be able to, to say what you actually want, what you actually need, what you're going to put up with and what you're not going to put up with. You know where you stand. Things are set, you know where you stand. Things that are set away, you know where you stand. You're like, no, I'm good. That makes a lot of sense to me, you know. Especially because, like now at this point, 
I do find myself in, in a space where I'm, where I'm serving more and I'm giving more mm. um, in my work mm. and, and in personal life as well, my relationships, whether it's family, friends. There's a lot of situations where I'm, I'm supporting this person, checking in with this person, you know what I mean, doing different things like that. So, like you said, because of the clarity of of knowing what I do and what I give, mm. I feel completely entitled to be able to say, okay, this is a boundary here, this is my time or whatever it is, yeah. this is what I need and this is not acceptable because I think when you have that clarity and you feel deserving of it too. But why do you have the clarity to do? What's, what's the What's the purpose? What's the why? What's the trigger for that clarity? What's the gain? What's the... What's the, the, gain, the, gain the, is, the gain is the, the collective benefit because if I have that space I'm in a better position to, to serve myself and others do you know what I mean it's a, it, it works on, on every level it's like for me to be able to give this and do this then, then there's just certain things that, that, that need to be a certain way mm. I get it and also like I think there's a myth that people think if they are just individuals they're going to be happier right it's like oh if i just look after myself and i get what i want i'm going to be pleased but it, it can be quite shallow in a way to just get what you want in this kind of vacuum do you know what i mean like without any any connection to anything greater mm. uh, and like now i'm posting every single day that's become a responsibility to me and it's a small act of service but there is an intent behind it, do you know what I mean? And, and I, I, I get something from that, which is hard to put into words, but it does grow you a lot when, you, when you're in that space of giving and serving. Mm. Uh, and even if people don't come back to you directly, you know, in every instance, a lot of times it is impacting in ways you don't even know, and other people will come back to you later. And I've had that a few times recently. People go, oh, I've been following you. Blah, 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 and yeah, I like appreciate what you said ago. Yeah, 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 I like what you said. I've been like one guy came up to me. He knew what number I was at. He's like, oh, number forty-five today. Yeah, I was like, what? Really? And he's like, yeah, I've been following. Him. And he doesn't always like the post, but now and again he will. So it's like, oh, interesting. Ghost writers. <laughs> ghost readers. Yeah, ghost readers you and ghost writers. But um, that's what happens. It happens a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely feeling more and more satisfaction from just like being there for other people in different ways it doesn't feel like a burden now and again it can be heavy but uh, that's a good thing for the collectivism right mm. you serve you serve I was saying this on today I was saying this on Sunday mm. the which I've, I've noticed for most men who, who feel good or don't feel good mm. is most men their true purpose is to be useful mm. yes to be useful to feel useful yes to feel useful to their support system to feel like they are giving to their circle Mm -hmm. To feel like their their presence matters. Yes. To feel like their presence makes a difference. Mm. Whether whether it be in the office, whether it be at home, whether it be with friends, most men feel mm. miserable, bad, sad, unhappy when they don't. Feel feel like they contribute to anything yes so when there is an actual contribution to something it's not much realistic Any, anything it is if you lift that nail that makes that that final hit mm -hmm. you feel like you have contributed something yes and that's the feeling that most men look for i i agree 100 percent when when you know I saw some stats around suicide, which I think I might have mentioned previously, which really shocked me. It was like 70 men, 70 men commit suicide each week. So that's an average of 10 men a day in the UK. Uh, in the UK alone. In the UK alone. 
and um, that might even have just been England actually, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, yeah, one of the big reasons for it is the sense of a lack of hope or meaning. And again, that's that individualistic thing. It's like me, I, me. I don't feel like I have any meaning in this situation. Whereas when you when you've got more of a collective mindset, there you go. You're thinking we. You're thinking you see? how do how even even if I make that decision, like I don't want to be here anymore. How does that affect the collective? Do you know what I'm saying? Like it becomes a completely different. Um, the, thank you. So the me 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 mindset is very now. Yeah. What do I gain now? It's very short term. Very short term, very short, term, very very in the moment. Mm. What do I gain now, now, now? Yeah. So what am I feeling now, now, now. My feeling now. But when it's when it's everyone else, boom, it's different. You know, you know exactly as depressed as you thought you're gonna be. You're not because you you are contributing, you are giving, you are you are getting back. There's the there's the sense of belonging. Mm. Yeah. Just a sense of belonging. Go on, sorry, just my brain. I know, I know, I know. I, I see what's happening. Connections. Yeah, <laughs> here, happening here's in the what brain someone now. said to me. I, I was having this talk with, with, with same talk about with this guy yesterday actually, mm. and as I'm like, wow. I said what he's noticed. This is Australian guy. Aussie guy. What he's noticed is everywhere he's worked in. Because best believe me, most Aussies I know have worked everywhere. <laughs> and there's something that they do all the time. And it didn't hit me until recently. Mm. He said, most people who flake out from work, business or anything, mm. have they've never played team sports. Realized it, and I it made me go back That's decades. Really interesting insight. Back decades is that every time, like most of the people who I've known, who I've worked with, worked around, anything, who they might be sick, or they show up. Mm. If they don't show up, they work from home. You got you find out. Oh, basketball, rugby, football something when you were younger they understand the idea of team the, the idea that they, they understand okay I contribute to this bigger picture men and women team but then again from my experience the ones who are constantly just going, nah, you know what I'm going to cancel cut break da, 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 da. don't care about the whole whatever most of them have never played in team sports. So they've never got exposed to that kind of They've never collective. been in this in a situation of where mm. your vote matters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Beyond just you. Beyond just you. Mad. This is why wow. it's been playing in my head for a long time. Individualism. I never connected it to so many things. I see what you mean now. Like there right at the so start, when, when you said it, it connects to everything. I was like, okay. I didn't see it, but now my brain's just making all the connections. And yeah. it's like even if you look at a family, right? Yes. Compare the parent who is like the selfish parent and wants to just go and party. Yes. And the kids in the way. Yes. To the parent who the other extreme is like, no, this is my, this is us. This is, this my is team. me. This is I team. will go without sleep. I will go without this. I will do whatever I need to make sure the whole collective is is okay. I get it. I totally get it. Then I had another one popped into my head was um, when Goggins was talking about getting through Hell Week, and he said at a certain point I had nothing left, mm. and what kept me going was looking at my the team. team and yes. saying no, I have to be able to keep going because mm. I got support this guy who I'm doing this exercise with or the rest of the team because we're all carrying this boat I'm not going to drop my side of it and let the rest of the team down yeah but that's what it is is we that can find extra strength band of brothers the team the team the team that's what it is and what's mad about this is like you never you never actually outgrow it that's the reality 
you never actually outgrow that mindset. You never do. Because my team of brothers I've known since the 90s are still my team of brothers today. That's beautiful. Because we went through hell and high water together and most of the times that we wanted to quit, we pulled each other up. Mm. So having the the collective mindset for me is natural. But you know, oh, you know the connections ain't stopping, bro. Like um, he's gonna say you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> so the, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. you gonna no, say no please. You, you, okay, shoot, yeah, shoot, yeah. Shoot, so shoot. what I was gonna shoot was um relationships, right? One of the reasons so many people nowadays struggle with relationships is they are just thinking as individuals and they're not able to yeah they're not able to think in terms of we yeah yeah so people team sports it's very important team sports because it's not about you anymore it's about everybody else go and play team sports go go and put your kids in team sports as well it's crazy it's crazy even like the kids we teach these days they grow up with that mindset too of oh the whole team well you know i was watching i watch basketball uh i kind of follow what's going on with, with the nba and i think one of the big issues is is the loss of that collective mindset with, with players a lot of players are very much in it for like what are my individual statistics you know what contract can i get this year it's it's, it's that and the game suffers for it so much now because you, you don't have those great teams that had their individual identities but could pause a collective and they'd have, you know, their one or two stars within it. Isn't it's, that why the Americans lose in international sports? Well, yeah. Hell yeah. If you look at the American team um, in the last World Championships, you know, they, they got smashed by a bunch of different teams who play together as a collective. I got the idea. This is a deep topic. We might have to circle back on this one. No, oh, man. This is a really. I did tell you in the beginning. I didn't no, tell you. no, you're right. I didn't it, make the connection. Connects. You did the yep. you did the thinking before me. That's what it is. <laughs> I didn't. Um... It connects in every every way, every way. It's like when I when I talk and when I teach, I teach in the in the concept of houses. <coughs> you see a million different houses everywhere around the world, right? Different design, different scope, different everything. What is the same? Foundation. That's it. Once you get the foundation right, you can build the house any way you want to build it. But in most things, there's a foundation. In most conversations, there's a foundation. Once you understand the foundation, the entire story makes sense. So imagine a woman who is who has got the collective mindset and she's seen this guy who is just very, very individualistic. Mm -hmm. She will find it hard to work with him. Mm. Very hard. Because it's him for himself. Mm -hmm. Just him. Same thing as well. Imagine a man who has a team mindset and she meets a girl that's just about her, her, her. They will find it hard. And that's the, that's the, that's the thing that people go for, for for all their life but they would never actually understand that that is it that is it so key it is so key and I think part in my head collective I think of like group but as soon as you get more than one it's a collective mm -hmm. as soon as you go from one to two that's a collective you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and that's when if, if you're a team player, you start doing things for the for the benefit of the whole team. Mm. And guess what? When the team benefits, you benefit. Yes. So it's not like you're actually putting things away for them. Like, you're not, you're not really sacrificing as, as much as you think you are. Yes. Because you are doing for the team. The team benefits, you benefit. It comes back to you. Like, I've, I've got this group I've been, um, I guess, leading for the past year and a bit now maybe 14 16 months or something like that we have a call every two weeks and it's been so amazing like watching 
watching how it's grown because I can remember how it was a year ago when I first met these guys just where they were at mentally emotionally all these different places they're so much more stable and that connection on a regular basis and that support and just that space to share stuff mm. they've gone from being like even low or up and down or whatever to just being like really really stable and then now like it's more kind of going up like that and they're all all three of us are moving into more sort of leadership roles in our lives because and we've seen it done and because, yeah, because and it's happening it's really surreal watching it in real time like watching these people transform and showing up in that space and you know keeping an eye on time and, and do you know what I mean like I kind of like manage the structure and, and, and almost moderate I suppose but it's been so rewarding to do do you know what I mean there's times when I feel like I just I don't you know I've got shit to do and it's like oh okay alright let's do it but it's always so rewarding man and every call is like really positive and the call finishes and I'm like yes and um are you laughing at me? That's what, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> my main thing is my my main thing is mm. I want to see everybody win. I say the same thing. That's crazy. Man, he stole my lines. I didn't steal that. He's always saying Charlie, I his lines. I said it I, a year listen, ago. I give credit. Google it. <laughs> I give credit. I've been saying that forever, even even longer than a year ago. I love. I want to see everyone win, apart from the sociopaths, obviously. That's, <laughs> that's the caveat. <laughs> <laughs> Usually. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. I do steal some of your lines, though. I'll be honest. That's all right. You should, man. But I give Please. credit when I do. You definitely should. You're definitely welcome. Should. I use your welcome a lot more because of you, for sure. <clears throat> one of my one of my one of my coaches cancelled today. Cancelled today, so I taught the class. Mm. I'm like, oh, that's an awesome class. She's like, yeah, you're welcome. I know. <laughs> it's me. I wrote the script. He's <laughs> like, it's my script. It's like, I know what I did. That was like my first fucking experience of you, I remember. I know, right? I was in one of his classes and he did some drill. I was like, that drill's really good. He went, I know. And like, he didn't even like, pause and like, look at me. He walked away. I know. He walked. He did it with the, the WWE. The theme songs. I know. Theme I know. Song. I was like, the fuck, man? What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> I was thinking, that was so unnecessary. Oh, that was like, I know. La, he la, didn't even la, say it la, like la. ironically. He didn't say it sarcastically. Yeah, I mean, like, I like, I know. <laughs> what the fuck? I know. I was like, are you serious? You spent three decades doing something. You know what you did. You know what you did. It's like, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's like me, me in, in a three piece suit. And someone goes, Oh, you look good. I know. I dressed myself up. I'm an adult. I didn't just fall into like Moss Brothers. Like, oh, just like rolling into a suit. Oh, oh, oh what happened? <laughs> I know what I did. <laughs> you oh, know, like that meme, you just fall. Oh, you fall in a suit. Oh, <laughs> Merovingian tie. Oh, oh, how did we get here? <laughs> get right, right here, man. Moss. I, I get it. It is what it is. Well, when you when you when start you, liking me to go on, I get it. When you, when you get to that level level of mastery, you need to be arrogant about it, <laughs> cocky about it. There's a place for the cockiness. Oh no, standard. And then and then what, ha what happens is when in my classes when I have like the one or the, or the two who think they know more than me, I'm like, oh thank God, I will sit down now. You will teach. Go on, teach. Yeah, I'll do that. No, teach. You bad, no? Teach. And I and I just sit on like class. They through their teaching. Boo this man! Boo! <laughs> do boo this man! Boo this man! <laughs> Everyone just goes, boo! <laughs> oh, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Standard, mate. The 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 nonsenses that I that I happen in my class, I love it. I would love to to be my class. I would love to be a student in my class. Just to watch Kess just do Kess. I would you love... Sound like, you sound like Kanye West right now. Legit, legit. <laughs> it's like, my only regret is that I'll never get to see myself in concert. It's, that's what it's like. Like, I know, I know, my, I know my skills. Oh, man. I know my talent. I know. I'm like, I know, I know. I know, I know. Standard. <laughs> my only regret. 
I don't blame him. I, I, I enjoy Kanye West's cockiness. I say this every time. Every time. I say it. He actually said, it's, he says some really interesting shit a lot of the times. Sometimes he says it's just wild, but he drops a lot of gems too. Oh, I've got a question for you. Would you call a Kanye West esque person individualistic or. Oh, collective? this guy. That's a really good one. Make you think. That's a really good one. I see both, is the thing. Like. He's definitely got a huge ego, but I. I do think that he has a bigger picture thing where he wants to inspire people on a larger scale. And not just for his own personal gain. I, I, yeah, it's, 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 I, don't, I can't say one or the other, to be honest. I think he does both. I see Kanye West as a collective, isn't it? I see both. Yeah, so here's why. Kanye West's problem is he's living in 2033. He's so ahead of everybody else. He's so ahead of everybody else. It's frustrating him. Everyone's playing catch up. And he is genuinely doing everything he's doing for us. As in us, as in black people? As a collective, not for himself. He is. It's not, it's not about him, it's about everybody else. So he's he is basically pushing the bar so high so he's high definitely pushing that people to see because it's possible. when he does that everyone goes hold up I can do it like this guy even if you get here that's good enough mm. you see my point mm, 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 mm. and most things he's doing he does not have to go public about it but his public performances is for you to recognize hey you can do this too that's it I see that part of, of him being a, in a collective. His wife, individualistic. His ex wife, sorry. But, you know, differences. When, when you see someone who gets the. When you, see, when you have a team player, you're good. The both of you are team players, you're good. Because you guys, you, you bounce off each other. Yeah, you can work together. There you go. Where's to the wise gentlemen? Find a team player. Team players. <laughs> Alright, good afternoon. Calm down. More like T'Challa, just like bitches. I just, you know, I'm oh trying no. to cover all the bases. Yeah, it's true. So yeah, that's that's today's topic. It's individualism versus collectivism. If you want to find someone who is individualistic, you, you listen, just listen. Observation is the key to intelligence. Intellect, just listen. Just watch, observe. I, I, me, 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 me. I did this. I did this. Did the team ain't doing God, shit. Me I right did now. this. Me did this. Me, me, I, me, I, I, I. I benefit this. I can't believe the whole train stopped today. How would I do that? Da, 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 da. Someone almost died in the train. How it affected me. Individualistic. Collective, collectivism. We need to do this. If this, if I, if I do this today, it's going to benefit us tomorrow. Collectivism. All right, this, this is going to be good for the team. This is the best thing we can do for this. Is I want to see you grow. Mm. How about you try this this way to make that better? Mm. Collectivism. You're out for we. That's, that's how you find it. Just observe. Watch others. Watch others. And when you do that, you get to learn about yourself even more. To go, hold on, am I or am I? Because most of us don't even know what we are. We don't know. Someone's doing this, someone's doing that. We don't know. So go and find yourself. Go and find yourself. Anything else, sir? Eh? Yeah, I'll leave you with uh, a poem by Muhammad Ali. Shortest poem ever written. 
everything seems apt. And it is me, we. I like that. So I saw this the interview with him and another guy. And he was talking about we and the guy was talking about me. It's like he's like, I'm not gonna fight with you on TV. I'm not gonna argue you on TV. It's about it's about we, not me. And yeah, yeah, but I wanna say this. I wanna say this because I I wanna change the flag colours to black and white because there's like mm-hmm. like the colour flags change doesn't affect us. Does nothing to us, nothing for us. You're talking about me. And how about the weeders out here? Like I was saying, okay, yeah, but no, but I was like, okay, cool, I'm done. I'm just stop talking because he tried three times, it wasn't clicking. So, okay, mm-hmm. cool, you know what? You do, you do. Pause. Anyways, I've been Kevin Lacasse, it's been Dr. Love, it's been emotional. <laughs>